you have to admire Texas, eh? Tonight's video is coming from the rest area just as you come into Texas on the I-20 coming from Louisiana. It's really nice rest area, picnic tables, nice clean toilets and quite nice gardens, eh? So anyway, hope you enjoy the video. If you'd like it, please subscribe and hit the like button and all that good stuff. Thanks. coming into Texas from the east. Uh, on Sunday night, West stopped by and at Big Spring picked me up. We left here about three in the morning. We got down to uh, Uvald or Uvald or Uvald or whatever you want to call it in Texas. Uh, unloaded his onions there, picked up some white onions as it was, it wasn't the size, it was took the purple ones out and put in white ones and normal looking coloured ones. And then we uh, went from there down to uh, to Mississippi and uh, switched to the switch. I picked up the, the new truck so I'll let you have a look at that and do a little walk around and see what you think, okay? Okay. Alright. There we go. Went with the Volvo this time at uh, 579. Uh, silver thing just really sickened me of the peaks, to be honest. The pack car motor. So, went with this. I've always had Volvo coaches in Scotland, and Volvo's a great brand. Uh, just that a lot of people didn't have the tools to work on them, or people couldn't work on them, or didn't know how to, but there's a lot of them around now, so. Um, thought I'd give it a try, so I'll let you have a little look around it. Uh, it's got a 13-litre engine and an I-shift transmission on it. Uh, big windows all around it, you know, much bigger than the Peak, so a 379 anyway. Um, quite a practical truck, you know. Uh, nice steps here, I wanted a deck plate right across it. Grab rails, all that stuff. Tires, Bridgestones, matching, alloy wheels, inside and out, uh, gear slide fifth wheel, and that's it. Um, it's quiet, to say it's quiet is an understatement, it's silent. The biggest noise that I hear from it is, see that mirror there? The wind going by the mirror, that's how quiet it is. So, I noticed the fuel tanks here, like they're quite big, but that's a little short one there. That's a bigger one there. So, probably for something in the front there, like, probably to what we do with the def, the def system in there, it looks like exhaust stuff under there. So, Does have the day. Yeah. Uh, little uh, skylight there. Plenty of storage in it. Light on. So a really good vision, you know. Uh, the hood sloping off there is nice. I heard somebody calling that a, a curb sniffer. <laughs> so, standing back here, down to the driver's area, 
same dash as the I don't know the Volvo trucks, I'm sure it's the same as the Volvo trucks in Europe, but it's the same as the coaches and stuff. Same steering wheel. It wraps around there. Cup holders. Yeah, it's quite a nice truck. Plenty of space between the seats. I'm standing up quite tall now. Walking all the way to the front, still standing up tall, so a bunch of cupboards up here. All around there, same on that side, and then there's other ones just underneath as well. So it's well thought through space. Like this as well, eh? It drops down, slides along. Smart. Don't have that in my old Pete. And then, as I said, the old eye shift. So that's the front of it and the back of it. Back here. So that's the cupboard that opened there. Some stuff up there, some vents and stuff, and a bit of TV mount here. You know. Uh, the wardrobe up in there, ideal. A little bit down there, you can shove your case under. So, more storage down here a wee bit. Got the old bed there, gives a new mattress with it. Just obviously fits in there. And there's another bunk up the top, you know, so it pulls down. Some speakers up there. Controls here for the air conditioning and stuff, and then down here there's a little cupboard with shelves in it in there. A bit of a workspace here, and so this here. We tried to. Ooh, look at that! Nice one. Extra wee drawer in there. Cool. Well, I'm really impressed by how quiet it is. How silent. When you're along the road, it's smooth. You hit bumps. The hood's not rattling and jiggling, and. Uh, it seems to be quite a nice truck. I like it. You get a feeling when you're in it, driving along. If anybody knows what I'm talking about here, um, some trucks give you a bit of confidence. You can sit there and you think, I can go at the end of the world in this thing. And, you know, it's got a good stereo system in it. Air conditioning works exquisitely well. So It's a nice truck. I like it. Now the next question is, Tommy, can we see inside the hood? And I'm going to have to say, I don't really know how to open it, because it was open when I got there. And I'm going to be embarrassed here, I don't even know how to open it. Now I do, right there. Hey. Is that a one hand operation? Oh my goodness, and my weakest left hand, eh? All the green. better than the silver peak did that it's replacing and we can get some consistency about things so, I'll just finish this off and I'll talk to you in a minute 
So that's the little Volvo. Don't know why I call it little Volvo. It's a big truck. Um, and it'll do us fine. Do a good job. I'm wondering if I should not have loads of these things instead of these beats that we've had for years. So, But today, odd day to put it mildly. Um, thought I was going to be dead this morning. And all I did was drive my truck into a way station. So Wes and I parked up uh, just before Lafayette uh, in Louisiana. This is the second time I've tried to do this because I couldn't remember the name of the state. We parked up just before Lafayette in Louisiana and went to the Waffle House, got some food, ate it, went to sleep, got up. I woke up first, I thought I'll just jump in the driver's seat, crack it along the road, get Wes a start, get to the truck dealer and then take it from there. He can crack on to Florida, I'll pick up this thing here. So all was going well, sun was coming up, bombing along there, doing great. Pulled into the way station, I can't tell you the last time I got taken inside uh, because of the virus. And there's no logs, so... You know, we're free and clear, there's not a lot they can get us on, so apparently though, he pulled us in um, and says, I'm going to do a level 2 inspection on you, he's got his mask and everything on, and he said, do you have any weapons in the truck? And I knew that Wes had a little air pistol that was in the glove box of my truck, because I discovered it when I was looking for something in the glove box, and he'd forgotten it, and we swapped trucks over. But now he's back in the truck, he's got all his stuff. And I said, yeah, the other driver's got uh, an air pistol. So he says, okay, is that it? I said, as far as I'm aware, aye. So we get to the truck, does all the lights up the back, hand signals, brakes, indicators, all good. Checks the tires, checks the brakes. And uh, comes back up the front and says, okay, uh, here's your, where's your trailer registration? I said, it's on the front in the little plastic thing. And uh, just at that, I opened the door. And when I opened the door, the bloody pistol and the knife, hunting knife, this big, in a sheath, and everything that was his grand Wes's grandpa's, it's in the door. And here's a freaking federal officer standing there, so with his handgun and everything. And I could tell he was getting nervous. He says, is this the weapon here? I said, aye, as it says, I don't know why he's got it here. I just don't, I, I don't, I'd rather it wasn't here. I never noticed it was even there. Um, he drives this truck all the time. And uh, so I went to go and the guy said, just you wait there. I said, okay. Uh, let me step back. And he steps back and gets his hand <laughs> down to his gun. And I'm thinking, I'm a freaking truck driver here. No, uh, some gun running person. So... He lets me get out after he's stepped back and then I get the paperwork and like a complete idiot, moronic idiot, let this be a lesson to anybody that comes across this, I was that hacked off at West having a gun and a knife in my truck that I walked out of the door, my back's to the officer. Sorry about that. My back's to this officer. I left the gun and the knife and I said to Wes, put that away in your bag. And as I went to do that, the guy went, whoa, yelled at me to stop. He says, I said, what? He says, dude, I've got a gun. <laughs> I, I, I'm a law person, law enforcement or whatever. And you've lifted two weapons and, I'm, and I've got a loaded gun. So I would suggest you put them in the floor I did. Stepped back, came to the door, told Wes to get out of the truck, took the gun and the knife, which, uh, you know, it was getting to the stage for me, I thought, I thought, either that gun and that knife are going to bin here, or Wes is staying with him and I'm going away. I was really majorly hacked. So, he says, look, uh, he asked me to fix the number plate. It was up in the window because I bashed the bumper a while ago. He says, I want you to fix that on the front. He says, everything else looks okay, but I'll be back and I'll check your paperwork. Anyway, with paperwork, come back. 
with another guy behind him, 10, 15 feet behind, walking behind at the ready in case things go wrong. And I'm thinking, this is just no me. Anyway, I try to explain to him, you know, I'm just no used to this gun scenario here, pal, and I'm too old for that. I'm no like I'm gonna grab a gun, hold you at ransom and head off down the highway with a load of onions that I've already got. So anyway, he did say that, hey, we have to be careful and there are a lot of idiots you know who you are and what you like but we don't so to the officer there sorry if you ever come across this rubbish channel of mine but I'll tell you what it was a bit of a shake up for me he asked me to slide the axles a little bit in the trailer and i was that befuddled i couldn't even think i was going to slide it forward and back and i was just all oh, my world had kind of it's not every day that you're standing there in a situation like you're going hey this is a bit tense here I'm standing with a gun and a knife in my hand and there's a guy standing behind me with a gun and he's the legal man and I'm just the idiot that's picked it up and told the guy that ha owns it to get it out of my sight. Beware. But there you go. Beautiful sunset tonight in Texas. The new man is sitting at the hotel waiting for me to get back there with this truck. We'll hook on the trailer tomorrow, sort the paper out on it, make some temporary stickers up for it, get up to Idaho and get it all stickered up. And then it'll be on the road make some cash so hopefully 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 okay and i'll get back into the little white puddle jumper and put around the oil field the new well started today so i'll be on that tomorrow hopefully 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 all right thanks for watching if you've watched this far thank you very much you're a hero thanks for watching see ya all righty it's uh wednesday night and the trucks are ready to go. I need to put stickers on that blue white one tomorrow morning. They're going on to that one, but I'm quite pleased by the way this has turned out. It's just a plain silver, but it's a kind of funky silver if you can see it. So if you can, I don't know, but it sparkles. So that's us, ready to roll. Hopefully this does better for us than the silver thing did. I'm quite sure it will. It's a nice bit of kit, I like it. So, another well, nice hot evening in sunny Texas. All right, hope you enjoy these videos. If you've watched so far, thanks for watching.